Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, live from the nation's capital. We are not ashamed of the good news, the good circumstances of what is the power of liberation versus to the Republican and then the Socialists. Yeah, we're about to kick it, baby bubba. This is going to be a great and wondrous show. Dr. Tani Farini. Farini will be with us. I am still trying to get that right. Oh my goodness. She is co-author of the textbook Common Sense Economics. We're going to be talking about Common Sense Holidays for Shopping, New Year's resolution regarding savings, deficits, and spending, and repairing one's credit. This is going to be a huge show. I hope that you all had a very wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. I am telling you, many Americans are going to have to get themselves ready and prepared for the oncoming debt to come. We gotta be prepared. We're gonna rock and roll. We're gonna talk about that tonight. And then my good friend BZ is going to join me. You all know him as Sir Mark the Globating Zeppelin. Why are black women so argumentative? We're gonna talk about that, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, what a great, great show we have tonight. Mrs. Biggs is watching via live stream and you stream. Mary Brockman, my bouncer, is up in the hizzy holding the fort down along with Claudia. Mary is my bouncer. If you diss her, you diss me, and you will be whoop, dismissed. So glad to say to you once again that we are not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, but it is the power of liberation. First to the Republican and then the Socialist. Thank you. Mary says, I'm looking sharp this evening. You can watch with Mary if you just go to the Euro Pacific Bank Limited TECS chat room tonight. Get in there. Get your questions asked. This is the night to do it. All right. And you all know how we do this, ladies and gentlemen, without a shadow of a doubt. So glad to have you all here tonight. Uh, remember, I did tell you all that uh, I most certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, was going to make certain that um, we had with us this week some of the great minds regarding uh, economics. Uh, Dr. Brooks Robinson is going to be with us Wednesday night, uh, and as well tonight, uh, Dr. Farrarini will be with us. Uh, so this is going to be very, very huge this week, and we're working on guests for tomorrow night, of course. Uh, I hope that you all had a good vacation. I, I had a wonderful one. Uh, and in fact, my wife and I got a chance to go to Williamsburg, Virginia over the weekend. And some of you may have seen some of the photos. I did take a photo with none other uh, than Benjamin Franklin. Uh, actually, it was Michael Tomzak appearing as uh, he. But nevertheless, I must say to you, uh, what a wonderful, wonderful time 
it was for my wife and I to get away. Hopefully you all also had an equally enjoyable experience getting away and relaxing, uh, enjoying uh, the, the whole concept uh, as we get ready to update our computer. What a wonderful experience that is always. Okay, bam. And... Okay, and there we go. All right, so we, you know how we start this particular program off. Live stream is finally kicking up with us. All right, there we go. Way to go. Way to go, Cass. All right. We hold up this huge plaque to help you say the Pledge of Allegiance. There's a little flag over here for those who watch it via Ustream. Big one for those who watch me a live stream. Uh, let the kids lead us in the pleasure of leading. Put your right hand over your heart. Go, ladies and gentlemen what a way to get this program started it is the pledge of allegiance and we are ready to rock and roll let's let's see who we have in here uh, and then there you go We are attempting to get this together, all right. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. You are the only participant in the conference. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what. We're hanging there until she gets back into the program itself. Brandy, it's so glad to have you here in the chat room uh, as well. Thank you, Brandy. Man, Brandy tells me that November has been really amazing, and it really has been. We've got a great number of serious guests, uh, and let's see here. Simply amazing. Uh, the number of guests that we've had on our program. But like the professor says, I am known for ha having guests show up. So, <laughs> all right. Let's see. I mean, I'm checking some systems out real quick. And... Let's see now. I think we have conservatives like you. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. You are so sweet. Okay. Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to leave that. And what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, and let's hope our system works tremendously um because sometimes things don't always work out the way we want them to <laughs> and if anyone knows i am one who's very very adaptive uh trust me on that one i i am quite the adaptive one um uh, so bam all right so we have that set up and what we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to get in contact with the good doctor, 
Let's see, D D D D D one Mississippi. In a few seconds, you're going to catch up with me, uh, and she is the author, co-author, of a very good textbook uh, to help individuals deal with their financial lives while they're in school. Oh my goodness! There we go. This is Tani. Good evening, Dr. Tani. It's a great honor for to have you on the air. Hey, great. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving and family and holidays to you and your family. Oh, my goodness. It is a tremendous pleasure to have you back on the air with us tonight. Wonderful to be back on the air. And I thank you and all of your listeners. And, you know, go radio. We're changing the world one person at a time. That's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Tani for for Marini was with us this particular evening. Wonderful book, and you have the absolute pleasure of ordering that book tonight. Uh, if you just scroll down beneath uh, the chat room, uh, there is a listing of the books. One of them uh, in our library this particular night happens to be Common Sense Economics. Uh, it is a textbook. Uh, that can help you and yours, uh, not only in the classroom, but outside the classroom, learn how to deal with money management and financial life uh, so that you will not be controlled by money, but you'll be in control of your money. Uh, Dr. Ferrini, uh, Ferrini, forgive me, uh, there is a great passion on Cyber Money Monday and Cyber, uh, or Black Friday, whatever, for people to go out of their way and spend money that they don't have. Uh, and I, I, first and foremost, I, I want you to give everyone your introduction, but uh, if you would broach that question, why is it that we feel it necessary uh, to just spend what we don't have? Uh, um, first, okay, think of Tortellini when you say Sarah Rini and you won't forget it. Oh. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's a good way to remember my name. And please call me Tani. All right, Dr. Tani. All right. Yeah, just call me Tani. All right, Tani. Yeah, Common Sense Economics is more of a book to help the reader gently understand how we make trade-offs. And we all get excited at, at the holidays, and we all have this kind of like urge, this need to um, satisfy ourselves by giving things to others without really thinking through the intended and unintended consequences. And we as Americans have a tendency just to get really excited about the moment, about the space that we're in. And we sometimes have challenges thinking about the future. And anything that we buy today and in the moment, we're going to have to pay off in the future. And so the best way to kind of think about things is to put a budget together. There are so many examples online, and you go to commonsenseeconomics.com, we have some zero balance budget, you know, exercises and spreadsheets there, where you can put every dollar that comes into your house to work. You assign it a role and a responsibility, and you can help others by finding that space in your life mm -hmm. that is personally rewarding for you and financially secure. And everything else just kind of falls into place, especially your relationship. But, but Tani, if, if I don't give gifts, I mean good gifts, uh, def defined good gifts, then how will people know that I love them? <laughs> I, the, the best gifts in life are the gifts that you, you cherish, not because it's something that someone else gave you, but it's something that's tangible, it's something that's memorable. So you can give the gift of time, you can give the gift of song, you can give the, give the gift of a letter that kind of expresses what it is that you found most memorable about your time with the person in the past year, the funniest moment, um, the most treasured experience. There are so many things that you can do that we just have kind of lost the pulse for doing that it's easy to get caught up in the Black um, Friday and the Cyber Monday. There are so many opportunities. One of the things that my friends and my family are doing is we're giving the gift of food to each other, something that we've made that we know that the other person would like. I like that. And that doesn't, that doesn't involve a lot of money, but it does involve a lot of thought and time. 
now, uh, Professor, there, there are people who are listening tonight and saying, wow, that's absolutely wonderful, wink, wink. But I was out there at 4 o'clock in the morning waiting in line so that I could get a 44-inch TV at the Walmart for 150 bucks. This stuff really matters to me. Uh, and, and I'm lost in this material world. Uh, it, are, are there certain things parameters along with the budget that people should have for this holiday season uh, and going forward? But going forward, the best thing to do, and well, one viable thing to do, and I've got a group of about 20 here in Marquette, Michigan, the other Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Mexico, Canada, Lake Superior, we've been thinking of creative ways to make this a memorable holiday season. And you would be just pleasantly surprised at the creative ways that people start thinking about how to treat each other to memorable Christmases or holiday celebrations, Hanukkah, whatever it may be, outside the box. So start thinking outside the box. And when you sit and stand in line for four, five, six, even eight hours, it's crazy. <laughs> the stories that people are sharing with me and good for you. As long as you're creating memories, I love it. So put value to your time. Like whatever you're paid on an hourly basis, multiply that by the amount of time you stand in line and tap that on top tap that on top of the purchase price of the T V or whatever it is that you're buying. Because that's the true value. That's the economic value of the item that you're purchasing for that other person. And those are the kinds of things, the common sense economics, we, we've written it so that any person, just like you and I, could sit down and read it and look at the true price of something when you look at all the other opportunities that you have in your life. And so one decision at a time to make the world of difference, especially when it comes to a holiday, people get so stressed out. Plan for a stress-free holiday and start bringing in people and helping them think about creative ways to kind of shake things up this holiday season. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I really do uh, because I, I really think that we gorge ourselves uh, uh, financially during the cost of this, during the crisis of this particular year uh, called the holidays. Uh, and we really want to shine. We want to. We want to spend. We want to show people and get their approval. Uh, however, uh, the more lasting things are the relationships, the family units, the the opportunities for us to share uh, one to another. For the individual who might have gone slightly over that thing that they call the maximum on their credit card. Uh, <laughs> for this particular season already uh, and basically are at a point where they feel um, that they can just choose another credit card to handle anything thereafter. Uh, and as long as I have room on my credit card, I'm not really broke. Is that the mentality that you want to take with you regarding your finances into the new year? And that's what we're looking at, is we're looking at 2017, and that is where we all have a fresh start. On January 1st, at 12.01, 2017, we all have clean slate. Yes, some of the things that we've done in the past will, you know, stage us. But the wonderful thing about living where we do and the age in which we do is that there are people like yourself, and there are tremendous resources out there where you can sit down with experts to figure out where you are and put the puzzle on a table and let other people help you figure out how to move the pieces so that you can rise up, enjoy the holidays, so they're not financially stressful. They shouldn't be a debt crisis for you. So you can step into the new year, the 2017 year, with guns a blazing. Yeah. Like, this is going to be my year. Yeah. And I'm going to, like, pick myself up by my bootstrap, and I'm going to march into that year, and I'm going to do it systematically. Now, there are many different resources out there, and every person is going to find an attachment to different types of resources, and that's okay. But a place to start is by just sitting down and saying, all right, so the new year, before it even starts, I'm going to read something that helps me kind of, Place myself. Everything is about choices. 
from the minute that you get up in the morning to the moment that you go to bed, you're constantly making a series of choices. What kind of day do you want? Do you want a good day? Do you want a bad day? Do you want do you want one that's overall positive or overall negative? I think we all want that bright day. How do we make choices that help us kind of mount things so that even when we have a little dip, as we go off and we do some crazy things, like standing in line for eight hours to buy a flat screen TV on sale, and we find out we're not the person that's going to get the one out of 20 flat screens that are in line. <laughs> I've been there. We've all done it. And we all have fun memories. <laughs> we're all going to survive, and it becomes a distant memory. And so um, your listeners out there who are feeling financially strapped, yeah. Take a deep breath and um, think about what it is that you want, what's most important to you, and um, kind of just, you know, house clean financially. Figure out where you are. Get a pulse on, on your financial health. And then once you do that, everything else seems to start falling into place. We are so blessed this evening to have Dr. Tawny with us. You can find her at tawny.org, T A W N I. Uh, dot org and why do I want her here uh, because this is our week we're going to be talking about finances this week uh, and we have Dr. Brooks Robinson on on Wednesday night uh, to talk about uh, economic uh, conditions in urban America but tonight in general America there are many people who uh, have really uh, bit the shark uh, this weekend uh, and also today attempting uh, to amass uh, the the whole gratification process uh, of family and friends and themselves uh, in terms of the Christmas season and the Hanukkah season uh, in terms of buying gifts uh, and what happens is we're we're put in our we put ourselves in a situation financially where we feel that we're behind the eight ball. Uh, and we don't want to open up any letters after December 25th. It's certainly not until Martin Luther King's birthday, because we don't want to see the bills. We don't want to see the debt that comes. And then once we start opening them up, we really are behind the eight ball because we haven't really planned and prepared for that. Uh, so, Doc, I, I want to ask you here in terms of uh, the different resources, because I truly believe that people should get your book. Uh, and I know that it's geared towards... Uh, the academic and text in terms of textbook, but that is a starting resource in terms of individuals who are not used to budgeting and financial planning to get their start. Absolutely, and, and we wrote this book with the intent that we wanted to reach the person who has never had an economics course or a business course in their background, either in high school or in college. And so our intent is not to be heavy on the econ jargon. Our a conversation with people as they read through the And if the listeners are interested, they can email me, add them into a massive open online course that's free. And there are complimentary videos attached to the pages of the book. So if you're not really the type of person who learns well by friends, then mm -hmm. we complement everything with a video and or a podcast so you can listen while you're on the go too. Exactly. And as we're getting into the, con the, the concepts of deficit spending, uh, there are those who believe that uh, the objective when they get their paycheck is to pay all of my bills and whatever money's left over uh, that's what I, I can live on. Is that the right processes of thinking in terms of how to deal with money uh, in general? Well, we all have had that instinct. If I've got money in my pocket, let it burn a hole. I need to spend it. Mm -hmm. But one of the great things about today's society is that anyone, anyone out there can put your dollars to work and you can actually earn income off of the dollars that you set aside and put in well-diversified investments. So in addition to thinking about the money that you earn when you go to your 40, 50, 60 hour a week job, mm -hmm. you can also put some of your money to work for you in these well-diversified investments and earn anywhere between four and 7% on that money. And that's kind of a nice way to you know, deal with life and balance some of the demands of life but also have a lot of fun. If you're interested in going on vacation or you're interested in possibly putting a down payment on a house or putting these kids off to college 
college or retiring, it's a nice way to kind of balance what you're thinking about in terms of that daily job against some of the future things that you want to do. So think about well as diversified investments. Also think about saving and investing right here, right now, in addition to spending. In fact, there are clubs out there where people, instead of giving gifts to children, they're actually opening up savings accounts and investment accounts. Exactly. Uh, Doctor, uh, there are those who are listening tonight around the world uh, who don't want you to know that they don't have it all together because you have it all together. You're perfect. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're beautiful. You're brilliant. I know how to laugh at myself and balance things and I have great people around me. Exactly. And there are people who, who are listening tonight saying, oh my God, that whole thing about a budget. You're talking about putting an anvil on me. Like I, if I screw up just one time on the budget, that's it. It's over. I can't do it. It's it's done, and I I might as well just deal with the consequences. No, no. I mean, I understand why you feel that way. But the great thing about budgeting, especially if you do it over time, what happens is you build in a cushion. I mean, life happens. We all have these unexpected surprise expenditures. Cars break down. People mm. get sick. Um, you can't go to work as expected. You lose out two, three days worth of wages, and the list goes on. Um, prepare for those times. And life is a series of unfortunate events. So build some cushion so that you can weather the bad times as well as celebrate the good times. And when things are really good, you'll be in a better position not only to give gifts during a holiday season, but you can turn to your right, turn to your left, and help your na neighbors in time of need or help community members who want some assistance on a project. Not only do you give your gift of treasure, but you also give gifts of time and talent because you're living this financially secure and personally rewarding life. And it all starts with the plan. Be the CEO of you. Yes. And um, craft a bright, bright future. There you, you know, I love that. Uh, I've said it when I've I've taught classes. Likewise, uh, you have to be the CEO and the CFO of your life. The, no one else yes. could do it for you. That's right, and that's why you know. And the great thing is, is that with all the resources that are available, you can be the navigator, and you can help people understand what best fits you, your personality, and your lifestyle. And sometimes you do have to take a few steps back. We've all had to do that. But it's kind of like exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get into the habit and stay in the habit, you almost crave it every day. But if you fall off, you know you can get back on. It's just hard to get back on. But then that's when you call in and you're processing. You say, hey, I need some help here. And you get back on track and you start, you know, managing that budget, planning for the future. It's all about the game. You want to win the game, and it's okay to, to move a few squares, squares back every once in a while. That's part of the fun of it. Exactly. You know, Melanie Collette is in our chat role, and she says that if that extra pair of shoes meant my hubby would be mad or my kid couldn't do something, I'd probably be better behaved. Uh, it, there's, <laughs> it goes to the choices issue, uh, and you have to make right choices, and it's okay uh, to put aside our desire for our needs, right? Yeah, and that's the great thing about it. I applaud her for putting faces to some of the decisions that she's going to make. And, you know, that's what life's about. And we all know, all we have to do is turn to the people who helped raise us. And we know that the people who did that, whoever served as our, our mother or our father or similar capacities, they made those types of choices for us. And we turned it into these incredible human beings despite the parenting. So we can turn around and do the same thing for the next generation. It's all about choices, and I think that's a great illustration of how you can just put a face some of the things that you may want to impulsively buy. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Just say, no, I don't need it. I'm going to help out my husband or my son or a neighbor, and I'm just going to do something that maybe is a little unusual for me. There are those who will be making New Year's resolutions regarding their savings uh, and their mm -hmm. debt. Uh, and more importantly, 
repairing their credit. Uh, and there's some people who have never seen their credit report, and when they when they have seen it, uh, they toss it aside, thinking that it's nothing I can do to make it any better. Uh, and I wanted you to give us some aspirations for dealing with, firstly, planning for our savings uh, for the new year, and, and then secondly, how do I get to the point that I'm ready to repair my credit? Well, everyone has access to their what goes into their credit report. There are three credit agencies, and uh, what I recommend all the listeners to do is to go on to one, not all three, yeah. because you can pull your credit report once a year, and go find out what's in your credit report. What are the things that you're putting in there? Um, how many times have you applied for a credit card? How many times, you know, have you made your payments on time, paid in full, maybe not paid in full, and the list goes on. There are, there's so much that goes into that that you want to find out what's defining you because what goes into your credit report is going to influence the interest rates that you're charged. It's going to influence possibly employment opportunities in the future, ability to put utilities in your name, and the list goes on. So figure out what's in there first. Um, often you'll find things in there that maybe don't belong in there. And don't panic because there are plenty of people who are out there to help you, especially at the agencies themselves. And then if there are some things in there that you can improve on, decide what it is that best suits you given the entire picture. Don't focus on one or two pieces, but look at the big picture and figure out what it is that you want to accomplish a month from now, six months from now, a year from now. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at how, how fast things can start turning around for you. And when you feel that you're financially stable, everything else seems to improve. Your attitude, your ability to get up, be energized at work, your relationships, and the list goes on. Dr. Tani, there are some people that are sitting at home saying, well, I don't need to take a look at my credit report because they keep sending me credit cards and I keep using them. So I must have good credit. Is that the re is that how you grade credit? No, it's not. And, um, you know, one, I don't want the credit card agencies to stop doing that because they're giving you plenty of opportunities should you find something that better suits you and your lifestyle. But learn the power of saying no. Bingo. Just because something's in front of you doesn't mean that you should accept it. And research it. Just hop online, go to a library, look your phone, ask a professional, you know, what What does this credit card mean to me? Do I need an additional card? If you're somebody who's tempted by additional cards, then don't get it. Just simply say no. Just recycle it. Move on. Exactly. Now, there... I don't know how much of a gift this is. If I had my a large corporation, I would want you to come in to talk with uh, my staff. Uh, I think that's a great Christmas gift because if my staff is financially sound, uh, then first it's a bill, it's a boon to me. I don't have to worry about them stealing from me. But secondly, uh, it, the the thing is that they are more appreciable in terms of time and money and other resources for themselves. How does someone get you, Dr. Tani, to come in and talk with them uh, and their people about uh, getting their financial lives together? Well, all you need to do is send me an email at um, tommy.ferrarini at gmail.com. I have this available at tommy.org. And I have the pleasant um, problem of almost being booked um, through midsummer. I'm, I'm, wow. I'm having the best time of my professional life ever. And I head to Japan to have a conversation with a group of people on this very subject because it's amazing. What you said, I think, is right on, my friend. Wow. But if people understand that they really can plan for a bright future and they start taking steps in that direction, then they help themselves, but they also give the gift of happiness to others because everyone else around them that's perfect them, whether at work, at home, working out wherever it is, they feel that calm and they feed off of that calm. I, I think it's an absolutely wonderful thing to have you, Dr. Tani, uh, talk with as many people in America as we possibly have. And if you can't go to one of her 
world-renowned classes, I would encourage you to get her book. She's co-author of uh, the book Common Sense. We put it in our chat roll tonight. Uh, Common Sense Economics, it's a new book this particular year. Uh, and there you can learn about your savings, spending, so that you're not deficit spending, repairing your credit, and so many other things. Uh, one last question for you tonight, Doctor. I thank you so much for being on with us, and this won't be the last time. We, we need a daily diet of you. Uh, but um, in terms of buying a new home, because there are a lot of people, uh, after they've opened up all the gifts uh, and they put everything away, uh, they're still in the apartment, and they're thinking, uh, I, I only have a little bit of money in my pocket. Buying a house is going to be difficult um, because my parents always told me that the money that they spent on the house and then on me pretty much made them broke. Uh, how should someone begin making the big ticket plans for buying something next year, whether it be a car or a house, but specifically for a house? Well, now, in, in terms of buying a house next year, I think that if you want to go with the 20% down route, mm -hmm. you're going to need to give yourself a little bit more time. Yes. And this is to, like, plant yourself um, in the booth or go to a local bank and start talking with some of the people who have the resources to take a big picture look at your finances. Um, look at the income that's coming into your house. Look at what type of credit card debt that you have. Also look at what potential you may have in order to earn some supplemental income. For example, I've been in three different countries in the last two months, and I've been in numerous states. And the number of Uber and Lyft drivers that are doing this, yes. doing the driving just to get through the holidays or repair the brakes on a daughter's car, they're doing it just to it's amazing. It's been a wonderful um, outlet for many people who are choosing to do things like that rather than take on debt, credit card debt. So, again, think outside that box. What can you do? Um, can you become a Uber or a Lyft driver? I don't know. It's something yeah. to think about. It is. I mean, if you could bring in an extra $250, $500 every week, uh, I mean, it, you get closer to that goal of buying your home. And 20% down, cash is king uh, in this particular marketplace with very low interest rates. Best time in the world uh, to buy your home. Do it uh, as best you can, as quickly as you can. Dr. Tawny, I thank you so much for being on the air with us tonight. How can people get your, your materials? How can people uh, get in contact with you? Just head to Tawny.org. Awesome. Thank you so much, Doctor. It's been a great pleasure, honor. We're going to have you on at the beginning of next year. God bless you. Hey, have a great holiday season, and thank you so very much for doing what you're doing. Your listeners and I truly appreciate you. Oh, thank you so much. And Dr. Tani, thank you for doing what you do, because you're changing the world. Dr. Tani, oh my God, it's a great privilege and honor to have her on the air. We're going to be right back uh, and we will handle some commercials. Uh, I, uh, that's how we have to make some cash, I suppose. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> the best late night conservative talk show in America, Black <laughs> is Radio. And listen, there are no people better on the air give you the best in conservative talk with Sackhead Sean and Sackhead Clint. Uh, and uh, we're working on some immigration papers for a certain other guys who happen to work here too. <laughs> <laughs> for those who are tuning in around the world to the best late night conservative talk, Sackhead's radio. Heart, 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 dude. 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 Shock. 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 The best late night conservative talk show in America. 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 In America
Wow. And in this web was a large, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest spider I've ever seen. Want to know the best kept secret in flea and tick control? It's the money you'll save with 1 800 Pet Meds. Save 30, 40, even 50% on veterinary recommended brands for your pet, and we'll deliver them free right to your door. And now you can get the safe and effective results of a top brand for even less with new Flea for X Plus. Four way action to kill fleas, ticks, lice, and mosquitoes. Plus, it starts working in five minutes to one hour and is backed by our 100% happy guarantee. Call now or order online from now, for our males, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Meet Jason. He was really excited to start growing his business with social media until he realized how complex and time-consuming social media can be. It's difficult to manage multiple social networks and accounts. It's hard to monitor what's happening on social media, follow discussions, and engage with new followers. It's time-consuming to publish updates throughout the day, track and analyze how effective posts are, respond to fans and followers in a timely manner, and gain new customers. The list seems to go on and on. Jason quickly becomes discouraged. How could he ever do all of this and still run a business? He was ready to give up on social media until he found eClincher, the easiest way to manage social media. Jason was amazed how straightforward and simple it is to use eClincher. With eClincher, Jason is now able to leverage the power of social media without having to dedicate several hours a day. He can easily organize all his social media accounts in one place, efficiently plan and schedule his posts ahead of time, engage with his followers, understand the effectiveness of his efforts with powerful analytics, find new customers, and much more. In order to tell your business's story, simplify the process of managing your social media and analyze results, sign up with eClincher today. Even when I'm busy in the kitchen, it's important to me that the special people in my life know how much I care. I choose Edible Blooms because it's the perfect choice. Traditional flowers and chocolate all wrapped up in one. Edible Blooms are made fresh daily using the very best seasonal produce and Belgian chocolate, all crafted by hand and delivered Australia-wide. Edible Blooms has the perfect gift for any occasion. Ediblebloom.com.au Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. You're listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show live from the nation's capital. We are certainly not ashamed of the good news of conservatism. That, uh, not ashamed of the good news of conservatism, for it is the power of liberation first to the Republican and then the socialists. Uh, so glad to have so many people in the chat roll tonight. This is a very special uh, Monday night. We had Dr. Tawny on with us. T-A-W-N-I.org, T-A-W-N-I.org. If you never thought about getting your financial life together, today is the day to do it. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Yesterday's gone. Today I'm in need. Make sure that you start today. want to give kisses and smooches to those on Red Nation Rising. I know that you all will be leaving very soon. want to thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, and for those who like to listen, it's at 2 a.m. on the Liberty Channel at Red Nation Rising. God bless you all for all the work that you all do and spreading the good news around the world. Also, want to thank my very good friends at Sackheads Radio and also uh, <clears throat> High Plains Pundit Media. Uh, Sackhead Sean, Sackhead Clint, and BZ do a wonderful job on Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And also, they do a wonderful job just making certain that we are very... Uh, clear in our communique uh, around the world live. And also, Dan the Man Butcher, who does all the work, wink, wink, it's really Jane, uh, <laughs> do a tremendous job of live uh, television as well as live uh, radio. And you will begin seeing some great guests uh, on High Plains Pundit Media very soon uh, coming up, including the Vice President of the Un elect of the United States of America, I believe it's Mike Pence. Uh, I think it is until we get a recount uh, <laughs> by the Democrats. But until such time, 
uh, in the city. And so there are a great many other. I believe uh, Senator Ted Cruz will also be on there. So there's going to be a great, great deal of great guests uh, on uh, Dan the Man's programming. Stay tuned. Uh, get in contact with him for more details. Uh, I hope that you all like uh, what we've done for this particular week. Uh, I am uh, certain uh, that many people will sit back and say, well, I, I only wish, and I've heard these individuals say to me, I only wish uh, that uh, opportunities like this were availed me uh, in a younger day, and then I could uh, handle all the particular things uh, in my life. Uh, and in all sincerity, uh, in dealing with the issues of life, I have watched individuals become paralyzed because of their financial situation. And I assure you that I don't want a single one of you to financially suffer uh, because uh, you don't have it all together. And I want you all to understand, <clears throat> even the people that write books struggle with the idea of fan financial success. Sometimes we write books in order to give our own selves a pathway, a remembrance, uh, a discipline, so that we might achieve our greater good and our greater end. Uh, it's like the young woman that should be carted every time that she goes into a uh, restaurant uh, who wants to buy a seven foot tall unicorn. Uh, listen, if you got that kind of money, then you go out and you do it, it's no problem. But if you are buying it, you want to make certain that the pleasure of having the article that you purchase uh, is never going to be uh, taken from you by the simple fact that you wake up in the morning and a bill comes due to you. I know that there are lots of people who are trying their best to please other people this time of the year. At one time in my life, I was that way. I cared about what people thought about me. I w it was all, I'm already behind the black ball because I'm a conservative. And then I'm even further behind the black ball because I'm a black conservative. And then I'm even further behind the black ball because I came out and told everybody I was a black conservative, which means I can't go to mama's house for Christmas and Thanksgiving and everything else. Everybody's going to be there. We're going to be talking about stuff. And nobody wants to go through all that. My objective was to please people. Maybe if I could buy some love, we could be all right. What happens is you get into a very complacent point where you can't develop relationships, friendships, because you really think that they're only out to get whatever's in your wallet, number one. But number two, you feel that the only way that you can build relationships is if you have to give something to get something back from someone else. And that's not what it's all about. Not the material giving. What I really want you all to be able to do is stand up on your own two feet. <laughs> White mama says, yep, you can come over here, Ken. <laughs> no problem. Mama, I will definitely give you. <laughs> I will pay you for your friendship. Um, all the love in the world isn't worth paying for it. And if you understood what love was, you would know that love paid for you in such a fashion you can never afford to pay it back. That's not just spiritual, that's materially real too. I want you to understand that going into this new year, if you don't get anything, I want you to get this. God wants you to be better off next year than you are this year. It doesn't have to be wealth. I, I mean, I, I wish I could go up to Mary's place and hit a oil well like she has. I mean, she's a multi-billionaire. She's just sitting there and everything. Just, I'm just joking with you, Mary. God understands everything that we're going through. But I really want, without a shadow of a doubt, 
the people in my audience to be more financially solvent, astute, and prosperous than they've ever been uh, in their ever entire life. I sincerely want to make certain that your children go to school on full scholarship. I sincerely want to see you able to build up savings accounts in at least seven different banks or credit unions or institutions, however way you wish. I want to see you in such a condition where you're able to buy a house because you're able to, not because you want to. See, but those are my wishes for you, but they may not be your wishes for you. So really, this is really what I want you to do tonight. I know this is the reason why you tune into the show because you know, hey, ain't nobody watching you. You down in the basement. You ain't tell nobody that you're conservative, especially if you're black and you went into mama's house uh, and everything, uh, crying with them over the weekend because Donald Trump's in office and you don't understand how Donald Trump got in office even though you voted for him. Um, you, you don't know. And so what you got to do is you got to listen on the on down low to this program because you don't want nobody to know that you're conservative and, uh, and like that. I understand. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? I feel you, bro. But this is what I want you to do this year to prepare for 2017. I want you to write down five things. Five things that you want to do in 2017 that you've never done before. What are you talking about, Ken, that I've never done before? Five things. Why five things? First and foremost, if you don't make four of them, you've done something next year that you've never done before. What a motivation to achieve in your life. But setting those particular goals means that you're going to try to meet those particular goals in such a fashion that you're going to be equitably challenged and in such a fashion where you're not going to be broke on the back end of it. Literally, one of the greatest accomplishments for me was to go to Las Vegas uh, after my employer had not paid me for six consecutive months. You try that. And when I went to Las Vegas, it wasn't on no scholarship. God set a goal. Well, I set a goal with God, and I accomplished that end. <clears throat> Today, SHR is the number one radio program at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas during the summer. Why? Because it took one little person with an ambition and a goal to achieve and no matter what the circumstances or the conditions that beset him, he overcame those and he got to where he needed to be. That was five years ago. This will be our fifth year, SHR Media, at Las Vegas. Uh, and it's going to be huge. All I'm saying to you. Maybe you do a hundred, maybe you do a thousand of the things that I don't care. But this year, set a goal for yourself of something that you've never done before. And the reason most importantly is because you couldn't do it, someone had to do it for you. Someone greater than yourself. And the only one greater than yourself is the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we will be talking to none other than Mark, Sir Mark, the bloviating Zeppelin. And we'll be talking about why black women are so argumentative. All right? What's up with you black women? That's why we got Brandy in the chat room. We'll be right back.
<laughs> right after these messages. Thanks for listening to the Exceptional Conservative Show. With home values up and interest rates near all-time lows, you probably know that now is a great time to refinance, like the Johnsons, who save $436 a month. $436 a month? It's simple. Just go to LendingTree.com, compare loan offers for free, and see how much you could save in just five minutes. I thought you said the bank gave you the best rate. Yeah. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. I have to do everything myself. Someone is sleeping on the couch tonight. From the war front to the streets of our nation's capital, men of faith, Dr. Michael Jones, the underground professor, and Kenneth McClinton, the exceptional conservative, bring both constitutional gravitas and spiritual perspective on today's issues to the most influential Christian urban talk show, 9.05 p.m. Eastern, Thursdays. It's a new day on New Day, Black and Red. Times are dark. The people are misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation looking for direction needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, Pundit Press, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because the truth is not always pleasant. Jersey Joe, Martin Reaver, Common Sense. You can catch me every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on shrmedia.com. That's every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, shrmedia.com. Why are black women so argumentative? We find any and everything to argue over except something constructive. In fact, we don't consider it a good time unless we've been arguing and fighting with someone over something. We argue in defense of being single mothers. We argue in defense of cursing every other word and being whores because men do it too. And we argue against accountability for our own actions. And we hide behind God and Jesus to do that with only God can judge me. They define themselves by conflict and not by who they're building with. You'll find one or a whole generation of black females fighting and holding grudges in any black family in America. 14 years ago, my grandfather was in the hospital dying. All of his children came to the hospital, um, six men and two women, and they were in the corridor discussing his care. And it was the two females that got into an argument over my grandfather's care and that devolved into an argument over who was his favorite daughter and they haven't been speaking since there's a tv show i watched called boardwalk empire and on the show in i believe season three there is this ultra violent gangster named jip Rossetti. and it's said that he's so mean that he can find the insult in a bouquet of roses that pretty well describes the average black female today and the sad part is we're proud of this we're proud to be loud and argumentative and rude and turn around and call that foolishness a strength and then when nobody wants to argue with us anymore we will yell you can't handle a strong black woman this isn't just a cultural quirk this illustrates a fundamental difference between the way black women handle conflict and the way the rest of the world does. No matter how inappropriate or petty the issue, we will find a reason to fight. And if she can't find one, she'll make one. Even if she knows what she's going to see, she's not gonna like, she'll go there anyway, just to argue with people over their opinions. Go to any social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you'll find a black female arbitrarily arguing with people that she does not know just because their opinions. And the goal is never to come to a resolution. The goal is to just vent this never ending cauldron of hate and anger and rage that's inside of her. I want you to take a look at something. 
I want you to watch this clip. It's a clip of an interaction between LeBron James and Mario Chalmers, also known as Rio. And I'll be right back. As a woman, I understood that clip to be a demonstration of black male leadership. Look how quickly the situation escalated and then de-escalated and one male was able to say to the other, my bad, bro, I was wrong. I have a question for black females. When is the last time you sat down, admitted you were wrong, and closed your mouth? <laughs> See, LeBron understood that for the sake of his team, he should stand down and apologize for his outburst. <clears throat> and it has nothing to do with money or getting paid to get along well. The ability to stand down and apologize for poor behavior is a character trait. That is not something that, that comes with money. You, you have that or you don't. There are plenty of people with money who act stupidly. Black women as a whole, we do not lack the character to stand down. Even when it's destroying our team. You continue to fight and yell and argue to our detriment. And your arguments are so misguided and backwards and downright stupid that black men are openly discussing other races of women to build with. I know what you're, someone's going to say, you're tearing black women down, now what's your solutions? The solution is be quiet. The solution is close your mouth. The solution is stop arguing, stop fighting, let go of your anger and be quiet. If you spent less time talking and actually listening to what the men are saying, you peep game. Because they're not telling you what they exactly want you to do, but they're telling you what they'd expect from you as a woman. And you're too busy being a hate monger and a brat to absorb it. Black men in general are tired of us. This argumentative thing you've got going, which, by the way, you don't pull with white men, is pushing black men away from you, and it's not getting you anywhere. This is one of the reasons we got a race full of baby mamas, and 50% of black women have herpes and no husband. At this point, black men are just tolerating us. They love us, they want to produce black families, but let's be honest, we've been overrun by hood rat slut culture, and as a whole, we are an undesirable group of women. My question is, why? Why are you so angry? What makes you so uptight you can't let anything go? Everything you see, everything you don't like, you have to comment, you have to go ballistic. Why? Hello? Hang in there, BZ. This is good. If you see a comment online you don't like, you flip out mm -hmm. on that person and yep. everyone who agrees with them. Mm -hmm. The problem is <laughs> you don't like yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You have the lowest self-esteem as a group. And the sad part is a lot of us have no purpose because we don't even know why we were born. How many black children do you know that were born for a reason other than mom got knocked up and didn't abort me? Ooh! Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care what white women do, and I don't care that white women do it too because their bastard baby rate is not 75%, so I don't care. <laughs> we wander through life aimlessly. We have no direction, no legacy, no wealth, no decent maternal figure to teach us decorum or how to be sexually responsible, and no parents to leave us anything. Mm. There's no point in no direction. We have all the time in the world to sit on the internet and argue and yell and, and scream and go on an hours-long tirade 
with people we disagree with. We only get one life. Why would you spend it arguing? <laughs> I am so glad tonight to make certain because this is a major issue in Ken McClinton, the exceptional conservative show Life. Uh, I wanted an expert in this particular field, a black woman, to be here to talk about this. Uh, so I have invited none other than Sir Mark, the blow man exactly. <laughs> you can't even say the whole sentence. <laughs> Sir Mark, the you to know before you start sending in your letters to us sir mark the blow rating zeppelin is not responsible for what you just heard it's sean lewis sean lewis of sh <laughs> so you let us Show. I hope that you've enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> I, you, Mary, you were so right. I, I swear, I pray that uh, Peaches did not hear that portion. I pray that she's gone to sleep. Because uh, if she had, she would have kicked down the door of my office and she would have told me to turn that thing off. I love the line from Melanie, Melanie in this chat room. She said, Speak for yourself, trick. <laughs> Site in for you all, just in case you didn't know. You can you can send your comments through BZ. <laughs> to Sean Lewis at SHR Media. I I'm, I'm Mamba, white Mamba. Please take a note of this. <clears throat> this type of gender uh, 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 inequality is unacceptable in our time period. That he would they would actually pick on black women this way. I'm shocked. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> you know what's so funny, Ken? Is there must be about a 15 second delay because I'm laughing because I'm watching you laugh so hard. <laughs> No, Brandy's not in there anymore. Patriots in there. Girl, glad to have you in there tonight. Uh, Mary's in there tonight, and, and uh, Melanie's in there tonight. Uh, uh, <laughs> Mama, please tell. <laughs> Mama, please tell Melanie that I have moved and that I and do not contact my wife and tell her I played that clip. <laughs>
Navy Airbus. And somehow, this video came up when I'm looking for the A380 Airbus. Now, what the connection could possibly be between the two, I don't know. But I looked at the title and I thought, well, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. And, and I thought, okay, is this a white guy saying this? Or a, a you know a Hispanic male went, no it's a black female so I thought all right <clears throat> mm. I'll listen and I'll I'll see what's going on <laughs> <coughs> and so I I watched the whole thing and I thought you know okay this is an issue but is it an issue that anybody thinks is an issue is it a non-issue what do black people actually think about this? And more specifically, what do black females think about this? No, no. So you're busy, busy. You're messing up. Uh, you're supposed to say it the way Sean says it. What do you people be thinking about? Uh, and oh, okay. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I'm not politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to love this. I just got a message from Sean. <laughs> I am not making this up. Let's, all right, let's see what it says. Because I'm taking a photo. And, uh... <laughs> uh all right. Uh, damn, where is it? Oh, it's, uh, all right. We're safe. Uh, he's probably not listening. <laughs> Good! Photo, so it's not responding to this. All right, I'm safe for now. Good! <sighs> Good. The most important person on SHR Media Wednesday night. BZ. I was watching you crack up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about that woman's brave. I'm gonna tell you that's a brave woman. That's uh, what I was thinking, and I and I thought, okay, something must have happened to make her say this. And is and is this woman so far out on a limb that if he remotely uh, factual at all, or is she being true? And frankly, I don't know. So I thought, all right, okay, I'll put it up there just for the heck of it, and I'll see what I get. And then, like life normally does, everything fell apart, and Castro died. Yeah, and, you know. And uh, we had a massive shooting at Ohio State. Yeah. <clears throat> and I should have known, in retrospect, that that would be the featured number one for me on Monday. Yes. <laughs> People and your woman's assistants. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I, I have. Not only that, not only that, you played the whole darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist, uh, and and my responsibility is to present the facts as they are. Uh, okay, there you go. But I I heard I know her name is now Trick. Uh, that's what I learned from Melanie in the chat role. Her name is Trick. So, <laughs> uh, and I'm quite certain that uh, if her address is given out, she would be visited by some messengers of God. I, I suppose. Uh, uh, Mogs. No. <laughs> well, I really didn't get much of a response in the in the comment section. Oh. So I'm completely. Uh, you know what? I, I think. I think you. I'm going to put that out there. I think you will from now on. <laughs> oh, and the other thing is, if you if you think about this seriously, if you're YouTube, if you're Twitter, if you're Facebook, what do you do with a woman like this? Do you let her speak her mind, or do you yank her social uh, her social media? No! Because if you yank her social media, you're doing that to a black female. Exactly! And you're oppressing her ability to give her opinions. So, uh, what do you do if you're social media? Mm hmm. <laughs> it's, a, you, it's not fake news because Melanie said in the chat roll that this is a real issue. It's a known issue. But that was before she put the Vaseline on and wanted to know the girl's address. But. <laughs> <laughs> Sharp, sharp <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you you stand you sit or stand corrected. Mary Brockman, my bouncer, my beloved bouncer, 
uh, made it known it's not a massive shooting. It was a massive stabbing. The only shooter was the cop. So there you go. Well, that's true. That's there you true. Go. And, and interesting enough, uh, I have a very uh, a very salient observation about that, if that's where you're going to be going a little bit later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, just, let's wrap this, one, this part up because I, I think that we have uh, basically... We've wrong about all that can be possibly wrung out of this, don't you think so? I think so, because I don't want to go any further. I, I gotta, okay. I gotta... All right. <laughs> I'm afraid to open my office door now. I don't know if she's on the other side. <laughs> that, there might be a massive shooting and stabbing right here. <laughs> Uh-oh. At least that'd be a 15 second delay. Exactly. <laughs> Ken's show has now been taped. <laughs> You'll never hear him again. Oh, wow. man. Wow. But uh, congratulations <laughs> to that young woman uh, who's so brave uh, and gave out such specific statistical information that 50% of black women uh, got herpes and are unwed mothers. That's a very important thing to know uh, when you're shopping. Just put that out there. Just... <laughs> thing is after after watching the whole thing you know and this is this a reflection of the times my very first thought wasn't is she right is she wrong my this is controversial my first thought was i wonder how many death threats she got Woo! <laughs> when, when she told black women to sit out and shut up i assure you <laughs> there were a multitude uh, of those a great multitude of those threats um but want to go right now to the um uh, terrorist actions on the campus of ohio state university uh presented by a mohammedan uh can we just call it mohammedan terrorism at this point that, that, that this is that stuff that got donald trump elected in the first place can, can we agree on that uh, I, I completely agree on it. You know, if it, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, uh, looks like a duck, and when you hold up a picture from an encyclopedia, the photograph matches, then it's probably a duck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so it's interesting to note how the story evolved over the day, because the first incident, like was pointed out in chat, is that it came out initially as an active shooter situation. Well, as everyone knows, since the information has developed, <clears throat> and also it's an excellent indicator of why you don't, why you don't put out things uh, and re respond in a uh, negligent fashion like some presidents of the United States are want to do, yeah. <clears throat> you, you let the situation unfold and then you, it begins to look like what it truly is. And it's truly an act of terrorism because as I say all the time, you don't just look at one particular aspect of a situation in a vacuum, especially if you're doing a criminal investigation. You have to step back and simply let the evidence go where it wants to go, not where you want it to go. And unfortunately, with too many leftists today, they want things to go in a particular direction and don't want things to go in, in some other direction. Mm -hmm. The thing that I find amusing about this is that loser Vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine came out with a tweet uh, right after the event, within about an hour or so, and already the information had come out by that time that it was an individual that was using knives. He wrote in Twitter, deeply saddened by the senseless act of gun violence at Ohio State this morning, praying for the injured and the entire Buckeye community. Overall, not a bad statement, except for that senseless act of gun violence thingy. The left want things to be in such a way that it's how they're thinking. That's how he wanted it. He didn't want it to have anything to do with Muslims because that's an issue, an area that you, you don't speak about. He's looking for it to be a, a senseless act of gun violence. And uh, unfortunately for him, it just makes him look it, it makes his agenda plain as day if your eyes are open, and it makes him look the fool. And this was an individual that you would have been uh, would have been vice president uh, at this point, exactly. which is is quite sad. The 
information was out there. All you had to do is put the various pieces together. You know, and we're talking tonight with Sir Mark the Bloviating Zeppelin. You can hear him on Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern Time with none other than Sackhead Sean, Sackhead Clint on the Sackhead's Radio Night. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, he is definitely one of the great new artists on SHR. He will be uh, doing his own show pretty soon because apparently he drinks all the beer uh, and that irritates the people at SHR. Uh, and thus, he's being kicked out of the studio. Uh, was I supposed to give all those details or just simply that you're going to start your own new show? <laughs> uh, no, all you need to do is substitute vodka for the word beer and you would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and my have I chosen the proper day to start. It's going to be on December 13th. There you go. Perfect. Is that a Friday? Is that Friday the 13th? No, actually, that's a Tuesday. Uh, what uh, it, it'll be uh, basically the same time slot as uh, Sackheads Radio, starting at uh, eight p.m. Pacific and eleven p.m. Uh, on the East Coast, and then Sackheads comes on at the same time the following day on on Wednesday. And uh, unfortunately, at this point, they're allowing me to Bigfoot their show as well. Oh, that is so sweet. Yeah, it's, it's very kind of them. Yes. Uh, see, you must be on a slave labor contract. That's probably why. Uh, I, I am. I get fed peanuts. <laughs> peanuts. I asked for cashews, gesundheit, but no, peanuts. Wow. You must have a lot of listeners when you start asking for cashews. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the ladies are on fire in the chat room this evening, and I'm not pandering. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Mary say the Dems are calling for gun control. Uh, next thing they'll be asking for is to register your pairing knives. And Melanie is saying, are they calling for car control too? Uh, <laughs> this, this is the left. Is this, is, is this all that they got at this point? A recount, um, a cry for gun control uh, in the case of a stabbing. Uh, a terrorist action by stabbing uh, and Keith Ellison. Is that it? Is that the best that they could do? Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending upon your point of view, yes. Here's an interesting aspect that that I think that very few people has address, have addressed with regard to the recount. <clears throat> and the recount at, at, on behalf of Jill Stein, in my opinion, uh, well, really, yeah, again, you do the logical extension. You, you look two or three moves down the board. And so do they really think that they're going to have any input in terms of overturning the, the particular states that they're challenging? Uh, Minnesota, um, Michigan, and a couple of others that escape me at this point. Yeah. And to me, what it looks like is nothing more than fundraising for Jill Stein. Mm -hmm. So if, if they have no real logical expectation of winning in those states, and certainly she does not, then to me this appears to be nothing more than fundraising for the next time around or for the uh, Green Party. P take, your, take your pick. It'll probably go into her pockets. Yeah. There will be some money spent. There'll be some money spent for attorneys. Uh, and there's another inter interesting aspect about this. Hillary Clinton is so in the tank against anyone, you, me, conservatives, anybody in chat room, anyone listening on SHR or in the podcast, she is so hateful of people, of us here, that she'll go along with Jill Stein, despite the fact, think about it just for a moment, mm -hmm. Hillary did not campaign in any of those states. Jill Stein did. Essentially, Jill Stein stole those votes from Hillary Rodham Clinton, allowing Hillary to not win. Mm -hmm. So, apparently either, one well, of two things have to be true. Either Hillary is so in the tank and, and will simply line up like the good little leftist that she is, or she's so ridiculously stupid that she doesn't realize that Jill Stein helped her lose the election. I don't believe she's stupid, therefore, the only conclusion I can draw is that she's going to aid and abet Jill Stein getting money 
and that she hates us so much that she's going to go along with Jill Stein. Now, That's, those are the only conclusions I can draw. Now, wasn't this the same woman who said that it would be antithetical to the democracy, even though we are a constitutionally federated republic, but it would be demonstrably antithetical to the democracy if anybody were to ask for a recount, not to accept the election as drawn and called. Uh, as, as a mark of desperation, does this signal that the Democrat Party is virtually broken uh, and, and there is no hope for it uh, in America? And can I go that far? Um, it sounds interesting coming out of your mouth, but I don't believe it for a moment. Mm -hmm. because you have to remember some of the biggest assistance is going to come at the behest of what I call the American media maggots. They're going to prop up this silly beast as much as they possibly can. And I, there, there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that uh, and we've already seen all of these people are doubling and tripling down on ridiculous, mm -hmm. uh, making wild, false allegations and it's all coming back to no matter what, you simply trot out either racist, homophobe, or Russia did it. Well, I've heard from a number of sources Russia didn't do it. I've heard from a number of sources that the NSA did it for a whole bunch of different reasons. Uh, you can read about them on, on my blog. Uh, just it, it, They're doubling down, and the American media maggots are going to help them to come back. What I said about a week ago after this is all this hate, all this discontent, all this uh, about, uh, well, the, the, the newest meme about fake news. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a, a piece coming out a little bit later this week that's taken me a week and a half to put together because there's so much information out there. Well, you, you, had, fake news. you had a very vital thing that you had to work on, and that was the presentation of that black woman. See? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes how did you know? <laughs> See? See, that's what I was saying. And when, and, you, and, and when you put this together, you had Melanie Collette in mind, right? That that's that was what you had in mind. <laughs> We're about to go to a break, and that leaves and? that leaves BZ alone in the chat room with Melanie with her Vaseline on. It should be good. <laughs> we'll be back. There may be Vaseline. All I ask is, will there be a blue glove as well? <laughs> We'll be right back with more of the best in urban conservative talk. It is the Exceptional Conservative Show. We are live from the nation's capital. We're talking with Sir Mark, the bloviating Zeppelin. Uh, and we will talk Fidel in a few moments. Uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, please, please get your children and bring them to the radio so they can hear the truth about Fidel. Not the glamour shots that they've been hearing on the ABC NBC circuit. We'll be right back with more of the best right after these messages. Hey everybody, it's Kristen. I'm here to review women's spirits made by dogs. I love these shoes. I am an FM sufferer, so finding shoes that um, don't make my feet hurt is very tough. These don't make my feet hurt. I've tried Pumas, I've tried Nikes. Nikes are pretty good. Pumas, I can't wear. They hurt my feet too much. I mean, it's to the point to where my feet hurt so bad to where I can't even walk. Um, so I was so happy whenever I was contacted to um, review the new dogs. I love these dogs. I love these things. My feet don't hurt when I wear them. They got the holes in them to keep my feet cool. Um, they got massaging um, bumpies inside. Feels like you're walking on little things of foam. I mean, like, it's just awesome. I just love it. The heel is a deep well down in your heel, and it protects. It's a shock absorber. So if you're running in them or jumping in them, like if you're on a chair and you have to jump in them, um, it absorbs the shock. Um, what else? Um, <laughs> and then um, it's a higher thing back here for your heel so it's like a really high thing that protects your ankle from when you're running so there's no injuries that so it doesn't cause injuries 
Velcro, so it's very easy to tighten your shoe. So whenever you're running, your shoe won't fall off when you're trying to run. Um, I love these shoes and I hope you guys really appreciate this uh, review and there will be pictures at the end, like always. Um, but I wish you would guys go check them out. They're only, these women's spirits are $40. There's a whole bunch of other kind of shoes that you can purchase as well. Um, there are uh, children's shoes, toddler shoes, infant shoes, men's shoes, women's shoes. Anything you can think of, they got it. Um, and they're pretty cool. So um, I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you next time. Bye. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, you have reached the commercial free hour of the Exceptional Conservative Show. with none other than the Globating Zeppelin. back everyone ladies and gentlemen god bless texas texas is a beautiful beautiful republic i mean state <laughs> i feel secession coming on uh ladies and gentlemen we're getting updates in terms of the uh stabbing situation uh well the islamic terror situation like if I, i'm going to present it that way and and the rest of the world will have to catch up uh where 11 people were injured they're expected to survive the actual uh, assailant uh, in the, this particular matter used his car uh, to injure uh, individuals before he used his um, knife. Uh, and <clears throat> it was a very quick thinking policeman from the college campus uh, that brought down uh, the suspect. Uh, and, and the way the USA Today is reporting it, 11 hertz suspect killed in terrifying Ohio State attack. Uh, I suppose they are leaning towards terrorism themselves. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, there is no other news outside of 11. I know that we've been hearing eight, but uh, the local news source, Columbus Dispatch, is reporting that there are 11 injured, uh, all expected to survive. And the only the only person that was killed was the assailant. The only time a gun was used was in the police killing uh, the terrorists. Uh, and his name, uh, I, I and BZ, you can help me with this we're, tonight. We're with uh, Sir Mark, the Bloviating example, and you can you can help me with this, BZ. I, I might be uh, slightly.
prejudiced by the fact that NBC News is releasing the name of the person who is identified as the suspect who attacked all 11 people. Uh, his name is Abdul Razak Ali Atan. Um, so maybe he's a good Christian. Um, I'm tending not to believe it. Your thoughts? Well, apparently he had a Facebook post indicating that he was a little bit pissed off because uh, there wasn't a, uh, a Muslim uh, praying room. Oh! In the state. Whoa! Uh, so, of course, there should be uh, Christian praying rooms in Ohio State if we're going to be fundamentally fair. Yeah! Uh, unfortunately, what occurred is this guy took a knife to a gunfight, and that's the old proverbial <laughs> thought. He took a knife to a gunfight. Okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait, what, what, what school was he attending? Uh, uh, that was Ohio State. Was he in the honors program? <laughs> I, I think we reasoned this a long time ago on the old wild west that you don't bring a knife to a gunfight at least in chicago you don't bring a knife to a gunfight uh amazing well he stacked he stacked the deck by bringing an automobile uh oh, oh okay weapon fest mm -hmm. and so as you indicated we'll have to do something about automobiles wait it's not a gun so no we won't <laughs> because that's a ridiculous and specious argument on its face anyway uh the reason the police officer was out there in the first place there was a gas leak in the area and that's why he was on the site and he was within viewing distance of this initial occurrence uh, the guy drove over a curb, hit people, and if the, my understanding is the person that's in critical condition is in critical condition because of the initial uh, uh, the impact of being struck by the automobile. And, uh, of course, anybody with any sense whatsoever knows that just like in France with a truck, uh, an automobile can be a terrible, terrible, deadly weapon if used uh, against persons who are simply out walking around in a in a college campus and expecting to uh, do so freely and without fear of violence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but let us not forget that uh, this event comes on the heels of ISIS back in uh, August, I believe, calling for random knife attacks in quiet neighborhoods uh, from no. the lovely little magazine Rumia. BZ, you cannot use resources and sources of news information that's accurate and true from overseas. Because then that would be fake news. That's so, right. That is, in uh, fact, fake news. There you go. Okay? Yeah, anything that's accurate and true is fake news. Now, now, do you have anything from MSNBC? Uh, any resources there? Any sources? Huh? Huh? We want real news here, sir. Well, <laughs> well all right. Guilty. You got me there on that one. <laughs> so... What we have found out is that this guy is really a rabbi uh, who was anti-Palestine, uh, anti-Muslim, and wanted Keith Ellison to be the lead of the Democrat Party. And somehow an old white male uh, charged him uh, today, and that's why he went out and did what he did. It, it was for the race. Yes, he had no other no other recourse except to attack back in self-defense with a knife. Finally, you're reading MSNBC as you should. Good going. <laughs> <laughs> Fidel Castro. Of course, uh, the uh, we will get further notice about all this stuff, and somehow it will go away in the news uh, cycle. Uh, we won't even know that he existed in the next couple of hours, right? Well, uh, actually, no. The, the left is doing their the very level best to make sure that he's elevated to semi-godly status. Mm. Uh, Canadian PM Trudeau and also the, uh, the person that's the president of the EU, Jean-Claude Juncker, came out with some wonderful statements. Juncker's, for example... Uh, said uh, Fidel Castro was one of the historic figures of the past century and the embodiment of the Cuban Relief uh, Revolution. With the death of Fidel Castro, the world has lost a man who was a hero for many. Wow. Wow. That's the Canadian Prime Minister? No, that's the EU, the oh, okay. Canadian President, uh, speaking out of Brussels. As 
So that gives you all you need to wow. know about the viewpoint of the European Union, why so many people in a popular vote decided that they were going to go for Brexit. Now, now they're reporting, and I've been listening to the news reports, even on Fox News, that there's a nine-day mourning period for the death of Fidel Castro. Uh, like that was organized by some extraneous group. Uh, <laughs> when in fact, that's the state saying, you better not come out of your house for the next nine days or we will put down your revolution. <laughs> why, why are we not getting the truth here, BZ? <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is that, yes, he was the fomenter of a revolution. Absolutely correct. And, uh, yes, we had sanctions against Cuba. And let us not forget that in the, the early 60s, uh, culminating in the, uh, the Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis, that he was working hand-in-hand -hand with Khrushchev to put nuclear missiles within 90 miles of the United States. Uh, if you had a really, really good set of lungs, you could have spit a nuclear weapon from Cuba over to the southern tip of Florida. So everyone seems to have magically forgotten about that. Let's also not forget about the economic stagnation of Cuba. It, it, it was absolutely frozen in time since that, that Castro revolution. Uh, it, it stood still for more than half a century. And you can't tell if you were to look at photographs mm -hmm. between uh, the Cuban Revolution in, 19, in the late 1950s, say 58, 59, and look at a photograph now, you, you really couldn't tell the difference. And if Cuba was such a wonderful place to be, um, there was what was called the Cuban Adjustment Act in 1966. Why was there, in fact, a mass influx of refugees to uh, the United States? For Castro, those people wanting to leave was an international embarrassment. Yeah. But on the other hand, look at it for him. For him, it's also a win-win insofar as he gets to unload thousands and thousands of people who are not happy with, uh, with the way that they are. They said that it was a wonderful health care system. <laughs> Everyone got health care there. Well, it's a collapsing health care system. You know, it's like... These people want to create a legacy. But if you look at some of the photographs and images about Cuba with regard to medicine and the treatment of the individuals, uh, you <coughs> find out that the two are completely, completely uh, divergent. Well, well, you uh, know, uh, Fidel did have the Witch Doctor HMO program. So I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, it was very essential, very useful, uh, very productive. Uh, millions of people were able to see one witch doctor at least once in their lifetime. <laughs> First visit free. <laughs> the funny thing is that in 2015, the New York Times uh, actually wrote uh, that China and Cuba have recently embarked on important policy changes, leaving some experts wondering whether citizens will be left worse off. In September, Cuba and the Obama administration began moving closer to normalized re relations, which, in fact, they did. Uh, and what that did is, in truth, ex expose uh, the, the raunchy and, and, and terrible medical system uh, and expose it for what it is. Then, of course, you know, there was mass propaganda, mm -hmm. censorship of the press. And the press should be the first people to realize that a dictatorship, one of the first things that it does is suppress truth. Yeah. Uh, amnesty uh, and the national of all people lists uh, all sorts of things that the Cuban government did to infringe on freedom of expression. Imprisonment for criticizing the government. A monopoly on print media, broadcast media, uh, internet access is clamped down. It's censored. Human rights organizations can't have um, access. And, of course, he, he imprisoned political dissidents. If you didn't leave Cuba because you didn't care for it and you said something against Castro, you were thrown in prison. Political prisoners that, that denied parole uh, after their sentences are uh, completed, uh, the prisons were overcrowded, they're unclean, uh, they're malnourished, uh, they suffer from illnesses. Uh, Cuba discriminated against gays. Yeah, uh, he there killed was racism them. Racism against uh, against blacks. Exactly. Uh, despite 
President Barack Hussein Obama um, in, in what he was saying about Cuba, but they concealed it. It was concealed and reinforced because nobody talks about it. Um, the, the government hasn't allowed racial prejudice to be even spoken of, or debated, or confronted, uh, either politically or culturally in, in any fashion. They just say that it doesn't exist. Exactly. Uh, before 90, 1990, black Cubans, and there are black Cubans, of course, mm -hmm. uh, they had no economic mobility whatsoever. And did that ever get out? No, it didn't. How about sexism? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the people that say that Cuba's commitment is to free universal uh, education is a boon to all of these people, uh, except uh, not quite so much to women. It's a, it's a culture of machismo. They export revolution. That's, that's nothing new. Uh, and, of course, it, it, Cuba has done its very best to prop up all sorts of oppressive regimes over time, like uh, that of Hugo Chavez, um, uh, Daniel Ortega, um, yes. Nicaragua. Those are the two that come to my mind initially. Exactly. So he, this, is, this man is nothing but a dictator. They hold him up in... Uh, in, in adoration as they hold up Che Guevara. Both are ridiculous uh, dictators and murderers, oppressors. Mm. Well, their sentence would have been communed under President Obama. Uh, we're talking tonight. <laughs> it didn't matter how many murders. We're talking tonight with Sir Mark the Blow. We had Zeppelin, our new star at SHR Media. Uh, shameless plug for his new program, uh, which will be airing in a week or so on Tuesday night. Uh, yes, not this week. Uh, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. In two weeks. There's a lot of stuff happening on SHR in two weeks. Uh, there is. And guess what? When I heard your radio show last week, and when I heard all the new people that were coming up, and you said that they were debuting on December 12th, I sat down with Sean and said, huh, you know what? December 12th. That sounds like a great week to sort of piggyback on all these new changes that are occurring with SHR Media. Guess what? I'd like to be a part of that. And he said, fine, let's do it. Awesome. Because we're going to have drive time in the morning now from 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, that will be done with Shannon and Mike uh, up in B. Moore. Uh, they will be doing drive time uh, from 7 to 9 a.m. And Lonnie and Ralph. Lonnie Poindexter and Ralph Chittums will be doing drive time from 4 to 6 p.m., each of them Monday through Friday. So, uh, and then your program coming on on Tuesday nights at 11. Uh, we're moving towards a 24-hour conservative network, purely conservative network. You, there will not be a Romney on our network. <laughs> no, and you know what? That's still an issue. I, quite frankly, am absolutely uncertain as to how that's going to go. I, um, did he not? A thing or it's a bad thing. He was elected by Republicans and became a Democrat overnight. I don't know what's happened with this guy, uh, but it, it's he's flaming now. He's flaming Democrat. Anytime you start talking about Romney, uh, whoa, okay, uh, we're way out. You might as well get Jeb Bush to handle. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, irrigation and water and commerce or something. You, you, you might as well at, at this particular yes. juncture. Uh, if it, dog catcher. I'd like him as dog catcher. Dog catcher. <laughs> Mamba tells us that 70% of Cubans in USA live in Florida, and most of them live in Miami. Here's a question that's not being asked. Will those people return to Cuba and overthrow Raul? Um, no, I don't believe so, because Raul is still there. Now, who's waiting in the wings after him? Uh, quite frankly, I don't know. Nature abhors a, a vacuum. vacuum. Mm -hmm. And when I, when Raul passes, and uh, I don't know, there are certainly probably a lot of people more than me that have greater insight as to who will replace Raul, but someone will replace him, period, end of statement. Yeah. Uh, McConnell said yesterday, he said, when Fidel Castro is gone, the oppression that was the hallmark of this era is, is not gone. He said, it's my hope that the Cuban regime will use this opportunity to turn the page for the good of the Cuban people. Well, yeah. frankly, I, I don't. I, I can't see that happening. Yeah. I can see potentially another revolution coming. Exactly. And because so if there's a particular person who's of a like mind with Raul and Fidel Castro, and he's being groomed by the Castros, and 
and it's in direct opposition to the bulk of the people, uh, you could see potentially another bitter and possibly bloody revolution all over again from the late 50s. Yep. It's not impossible. And what's worse is Raul has already announced that he's stepping down in 2018 uh, from the dictatorship. Uh, so this could be get this could get kind of Venezuelan ugly in a bit uh, over who what faction takes what control, whether the military takes control, whether uh, politicians who uh, want to take control, whether the, there will be an invasion by Cubans going back home and saying, you know what, we want our nation back. We want it to be a republic, and we want it to be a capitalist, constitutional, conservative republic. Uh, potential state to the union. And what would that do if many Cubans went back home? What would that do to Miami and the vote in Florida? Doesn't that switch everything over to the Democrats? Uh, potentially. I don't think necessarily you're, you're all that far away anyway mm -hmm. in terms of, of Florida. There, there's so many other things that, that could occur. If, uh, you know, Florida is 90 miles away from Cuba. Many people don't realize that, mm -hmm. that it's so incredibly close to Cuba. Uh, one of the two things that I never, ever forgave and never will forgive Jimmy Carter for is the, uh, the influx of the Mary Alitos from the Mary Alito boat lift and him sending us essentially all the finest thugs that he could from the street. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that I never forgave him for was giving away the Panama Canal. Yeah. Uh, so that's how you got all the floods. Uh, the, the movie, the huge movie Scarface uh, with Al Pacino, who had one of the worst accents in the world imaginable, uh, that all came about uh, in the flood of drugs into Miami because of the Mary Alito boat lift. Mm -hmm. I can remember being in the jails in the early 80s. And one of the reasons, one of the ways that we used to classify Cubans, Cuban murderers would have tattoos of various forms and types in their lips, underneath their lips. We called that lipping Cubans to find out if we could put a particular individual that we suspected from Cuba into a tank with other people and not watch them being killed. Mm. Uh, so he gave us only the best and the finest from well, the sir. bowels of the prisons of Cuba. Well, isn't that what they've always done uh, to the U.S.? They've sent us their tired, their poor, their thugs, uh, drug dealers, uh, and we've made great people out of them. Uh, what a great uh, nation. <laughs> we've made some great people out of them. <laughs> the, the thrust of the, the Mary Alito boat lift was the bulk of them, the males, yeah. uh, were, were the, the dregs of their society. So it, it, uh, it did them a great favor by getting rid of them. They freed all those people out of the prisons. They had to spend less money on prisons, food, time, etc. So it was a win for Castro. There you go. Castro, not just an oil, a dictator. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, we hope that many other, uh, and I want to talk with you next week because I know we come to the very end of our program. We've run out of time. Uh, but I want to talk with you about what's happening in France uh, because a conservative has come to power in France uh, thanks to the election on uh, Sunday, and I'll be talking with Janice Hall, J. Hall World Report about that tomorrow uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, the world is going conservative, and you should thank God. <laughs> BZ? Uh, a, a prediction? Italy yeah. is going next. Wow! Wow! Okay, when Italy does it, the immigration thing will be shut down. Completely shut down. You want to worry uh, about... I, I don't know about that, but, but here's one thing I do believe potentially could occur. If Italy decides it's going to make its own Ital exit, so to speak, uh, not far on the heels of that, I think you may actually see France get in line. If wow. France gets in line, the EU is done. Wow. We should be looking by the end of what? Next year, maybe the year after that, at the end of the European Commission. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's, a huge, there's a huge fight in the U.S. Going to get Brexit done. And they're getting us all back from the leftist elite in the U.K. Wow. I want to say to you tonight that it's been a great pleasure having the Bloviating Zeppelin. You can go to thebloviatingzeppelin.net to get more and more good news from him. 
uh, and especially if you want to insult uh, the the woman who should be carded most in America, Melanie Collette, uh, with uh, Melissa Ortiz is her name. Uh, <laughs> what a great video to start this program off with tonight. <laughs> BZ, BZ, Melanie, talk about it in the chat room. Uh, listen. Nine millimeters at midnight. Oh my, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't remember anything that we talked about tonight, do remember this: God bless America. Now America bless God. We will see you tomorrow night, Tuesday night, and on Wednesday night, come back Super Night, Sackheads Radio Night. God bless. And good night. Thank you, BZ.